So I'm just working around in the reptile room, doing loads of bits and pieces, and I figured, you know what, I'm gonna bring you guys along just to sort of see what generally goes on. Uh, Mushu, he's being dead, dead active. If you don't know who Mushu is, he's a Calyx Versicolor. He is up the back of the light, just there anyway. And uh, yeah, he's being dead active. He's fairly destroyed his enclosure, so we're gonna tart it up. We've got that log there that's sort of fallen. We're gonna whack that back up. We've got this amazing piece of wood just here that was gonna be for that, but I thought, Mushu is just going to absolutely love it, but it's too big. You can see all this sort of stuff. We've basically just got all the bark off it. We've done that already, and we're going to use the bark for something as well. We may have to go and uh, deal with Hitler here, Rosie. She likes to taste me, so I've got to be really careful there, but she's pretty much destroyed her enclosure. All of her wood's all over the place, and it's, again, because she is so active, she's just destroyed her enclosure. The water needs changing. She's got a little shed down there. We've just got to sort that out, and that is going to scare the living hoobie-joobies out of me. Diego, you're going to say hi. Hi. We'll give you a little update on the baby morning geckos, the morning gecko eggs, and the morning gecko enclosure. And I'm going to need your help arranging the bioactive tarantula enclosure that I'm going to build, simply because that's I want that to be amazing. That's going to be absolutely beautiful. But I need your help with some tips. That's going to be for our Tlitli Cow Albi Palossum Tarantula. We're going to get him out of that stupid little tub. Put him in that nice tropical factory UK enclosure. But first, as you can probably already tell, we've already started working on this piece of wood. So we're going to start that first. Get that in his enclosure. And just sort of build his enclosure up a little bit more. Give him a lot more branches. A lot more places to jump around. And basically a lot more places to portray his wild behaviours. Simply because Mushu is a wild animal. He's not a wild core animal. He's called a wild stowaway. Basically, we've got a big wood company in the UK. A lot of people already know the story with Mushu because I'm stressing it all the time because it's a fascinating story. The big wood company here in the UK brought a big shipment of wood in from South Asia. They opened up the container and boom, hello, out come Mushu. Can you imagine the workers' faces? Well, I've literally only got this knife. That's all I've got to cut. I don't know where my big one is, so bear with me. But can you imagine the faces of the workers when they opened up a container ship and boof, out pop Mushu. That's amazing. So now we're left with this piece. It's like got a nice big fork sort of area on it, big piece there. Now the idea is to get it down that bottom corner, that big flat piece in the bottom corner, and to go up and round. So hopefully he'll sleep sort of around this area nearer to the heat ball, but where these aren't too close to the heat ball, where they're gonna cause any damage. He's starting to freak out a bit, but check this out. So far, it goes up, down over the basking spot, and up round the back of the lamp. So it's not touching the light guard, which is good. So I'm basically just gonna burrow this side in, make it nice and secure, and then check all the temperatures around that. Let it really heat up. We've got this piece just here, which has fallen over the times, and I like to stab it basically in the ground, just there, and wedge it, so it's not wedged there, so there we go, and really sort of wedge it up that top corner, just like that, so we basically end up with an upright vertical stick like they'd naturally see in the wild, then just pack it around the bottom, say hi to Mushu all the way over there, Burrow this side down, because we want to move all the plants out of the way so it's not crushing the plants, because we do have a nice big pothos growing nicely in here. So I'll move that, move it, bury it down, put a bit of substrate back over the top of it, and put the plants around it nicely, 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 just like that, so you can't really tell that it's there. I might even move that piece just there. There we go. So it's burrowed in nicely there. I kind of like that to be fair, but <sighs> Mushu's going crazy. I can't wait to get him in that enclosure once we actually do get around to uh, building it all up. But for now, this is working perfectly fine for him. And he's got a lot more sticks to climb on now. I wonder if I can find anywhere in there for this piece, because that's quite a fancy piece. Uh, if I can go in there or this way, let's try that. Boom. So now the joy with that piece I've just put in, you can see how I've got it at the front of the enclosure nice and flat. So all of the woods tends to be quite high up and towards the back, closer to the UV light. This one, this one, and the top of this one are furthest away from the UV. So he can get away from all the UV rays by coming this side of the enclosure and going lower in the enclosure. All this leftover bark has got a big reason. We're going to grab just a big handful and it's going in with the millipede. I need to give that millipede a name. 
I don't know whether it's male, I don't know whether it's female. I don't know. But why don't you give him a name, guys? Give him a little name. Look, there he is. He's Cutie McCuteface. All your name suggestions, I'll pick out off one of you guys and you'll get a shout out as well. All this dusty stuff that's left, that's just going to go in with my substrate mix just to add a little bit of biodiversity and in with my tropical great isopod colony. Look at them all. There's loads in there, but you can see how there's virtually no leaf litter left in there. So having a bit of natural matter in there only just benefits them that little bit more. <laughs> But let's give you a little update on the leopard gecko enclosure. Now, if you haven't seen this whole build video, I'll link it in the top corner right now for you to have a look. Don't worry, that's not actual sand. That's a solid substrate. See that hole there? Well, that goes round the back of the enclosure into here. And we've got the moist hide where we can access it from the outside without having to actually disturb it. Got a load of cold hides down there, live planted. And Millie, at the minute, is just there watching us how cute is she but the morning gecko as well let's talk about them because they're just up there we've got a few babies to show you but look Mushu is already using that branch he's just got him so close to the uv he's not actually on the ball guard anymore it just must be absolutely perfect i can't wait to see the progression in that but babies right we do have babies this enclosure needs to be, oh there we go they're growing up really nicely that's just one of them there is two in here, so I don't know where the other one is. But, yeah, I need to really... Oh, there we go. He's on the back wall over there. Oh, see him run? Yeah, they're the latest babies. They come off these eggs here. And in the back, just here, boof, there's another one. Give it another month or so, and he will be big enough to go in that one with them. However, there is another one in here somewhere, but... I don't know, the pothos is growing so well in there, it's hard to actually spot them. But back over to the adults. Now, there isn't any on display. I really do want some more adult morning geckos to go in there, just to make it a bit more versatile. But we've still got the eggs. There's, oh, there's one of the morning geckos. Now, why is she doing underneath the waterfall? I've figured this one out really well, actually. It's because it's right next to the heat source. So I'm adding an above heat source to this enclosure to hopefully bring her out from underneath there. Now, that I do have a problem. That is a waterfall that's always turned off because they have laid eggs in there. I am tempted, and I need your advice. Do I flatten it off? Do I get rid of the waterfall, the water, the pond, all of it, and just do a flat substrate throughout the whole lot and add dart frogs? So I am tempted to do that. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below. But how can I get your help with this? This, obviously, is the, trop uh, the Tropical Factory UK glass enclosure for my Talithly Cow Albi Palossum Tarantula. Now, I've got two options. One, option one, naturalistic rock work. All the background in rock work, the hide in rock work, um, and I've got... A plant over here. Oh yeah, look, all my plants, all my moss, everything's growing really, really well. But, see that grass plant just there? Well, that's to go in there, because it's a naturalistic plant for Nicaragua, which is where this tarantula comes from. Do I go rock work, or do I enrich their naturalistic behaviours, because they live in true root, tree roots at the bottom of the trees. So do you know when you've got like the roots that come down, you've got those little arches? Well, that's where they live in the burrows. So I'm tempted to do that in the back corner. You can tell, look, there you go, I've already started to do all the planning for it. That's the two options I've got. Let me know in the comments what you guys would appreciate more. Now it's time to sort out Hitler's enclosure. She's called Rosie. Now this is going to be fun. I have got this snake hook, which I can use, or I can use this big one just here. This is the one I unboxed from the Swell Reptile uh, unboxing video I last done. If you want to see that video, I'll link it just up there. But this is way overkill for her, and it's quite a heavy one to sort of be able to manipulate and handle her without actually getting bitten. So it's just going to, I've got one that's too small and one that's way too big, so it's not really ideal. But we're going to get her out anyway, hopefully get, be able to get her out. We're going to be able to get into her enclosure, move all the log work around, give it a spray down, give it a clean down, scrub the water bowl, just basically maintain her enclosure. We've got to check all the temperatures and humidity. But I think she thinks she's about to have a meal, and I think I'm about to be that meal. There's the next right. Look at her resting up at me. I've not been bit yet. I mean, she's been for me once, and that's it. Put the water bowl back. Big stick number one. That goes all the way up to that back corner. Next one is the next big stick, which is this one just here. We've got this piece just here. We can use that for on the top coming down and then we've got another piece just here which we will use 
just there to help her rub up against and shed. So that's that. Absolutely nothing amazing, but we've got a log at the top coming down. We've got the two big logs going up. They're nice and secure. That's where she hides underneath there. And Diego has sat and watched everything. That was nice and easy. Oh, well, then again, it's not fully done yet, but... What do you think of that, Diego? What do you think of that, mate?